everyone and welcome you all to another new video and in this video we are going to take a look at WASP 39b which is an exoplanet existing outside our solar system. This planet orbits a star which is about 700 light years away from our sun. This planet orbits pretty close to its host star and the distance at which this planet orbits its star is about 4% the distance from our sun to earth so it has a radius of about 0.04896 au and one au is about the distance from earth to sun and as a fact it's really hot over there not only it is hot it is actually tidally locked to its host star now what does being tidally locked means that is it's one side of that planet is always facing its host star no matter which time of the year that side constantly faces its star so that side is very hot as compared to the other side but overall the planet um, is a pretty hot planet another way to know as to how close uh, the planet is um, to its host star is to sort of see how fast it rotates that star so this planet has uh, rotates its host star in about four to four and a half days which is only possible if its orbit is pretty close to the so you might be wondering that why am i suddenly speaking about this star and why am i giving you these details that's because the James Webb Space Telescope or JWST recently published a very interesting study of this particular planet. Well this that you see on the screen is sort of an artist's impression of this particular planet. Now as I was saying this planet orbits pretty close to its star, it's tidally locked, uh, it's pretty hot. Now how do I know all of these details about a planet which is 700 light years away from us? So here I'm going to introduce a technique called transiting. Now what transiting essentially means is you have a star and you are directly looking at the star. Now if some object or some body passes in front of that star, some of the light from the star reaching you will be blocked. And depending on how much light has been blocked, you can pretty much tell a lot about the shape of the body, how much time it took to cross that star and so on and so forth. So in this case, uh, what what's actually going on is all our telescopes on ground and not space or whatever is actually observing its host star and when this particular planet sort of goes near it you get a dip in the brightness of that star and we study these dips in order to understand a specific feature about that planet so these uh, dips of the brightness of the star is something called the light curves now depending on the size and the shape of the light curve as I said, we can predict a lot about the planet. So the depth of the light curve actually talks about how big your planet is. So the bigger the planet, the more light it will block and it will create a, a big dip in your brightness. The difference between the peaks of these, this light curve sort of tells you about the periodicity of the planet around its star. So if you look at this peak as compared to this peak and see the time difference between it, you see that this sort of repeats on and on and on so it has a fixed periodicity so from this periodicity you can uh, you can estimate what is the radius of that uh, planet around its star so sort of following on the same line of thought what james webb does is something bit different so it uses a technique called transit spectroscopy so the transit part is exactly the same as i talked before you essentially analyze the dip in the brightness as a planet sort of passes from its host star. But that spectroscopy term that I just added is something extra and something special that James Webb is being able to achieve. What spectroscopy essentially means is you're studying the individual components of light, individual wavelengths of light uh, at its finest details. So if you have white light and you sort of pass it through a diffraction grating, i.e. a paper with very fine lines, you can see that that light sort of breaks down into its component wavelength. It's exactly the same as if you would pass a white light through a prism and you see the white sort of the white light sort of breaks down it in its all of its constituent colors. That is exactly what sort of exists inside the web's instruments. Uh, especially the nearest, the near infrared spectrograph is, is, is one specific instrument which is used to study all of these uh, spectral lines of galaxy uh, objects like planets as they pass through their host star. So what 
essentially is happening is as the planet uh, passes uh, in front of the star the light from the host star passes through the atmosphere of the planet and reaches the telescope so when that happens there are different elements and compounds present onto the atmosphere of the planet that sort of absorbs very specific wavelengths of light and once you actually look at uh, look at the spectrum of light that is coming through that you will see certain absorption lines of very specific compounds and the reason you can associate what compound relates to what absorption line is because you can carry out similar experiments in your lab so the experiments that you carry out in your lab is sort of uh, a reference and you can compare it with the uh, observations that you make uh, of these planets and are and accurately pinpoint as to what kind of uh, elements that are present so the latest data from James Webb uh, is pretty exciting and that is because it sort of goes on and shows what exact elements are present in your atmosphere right so in the case of the wasp 39b the planet that I'm discussing right now for the first time ever we have detected compounds like sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide carbon dioxide even when elements such as sodium etc so what's also exciting is we have also detected h2o in the planet's atmosphere which is pretty exciting in my opinion however you have to understand that this water sort of exists in its vapor state and that's because this planet is really hot and it, it's so close to its star that you cannot have liquid water so all of the liquid water exists as water vapor in the atmosphere of the planet along along with it as i said it it has a plethora of other uh, elements as seen from the spectra um, and the significance of sulfur dioxide is particularly interesting in this data is because that sort of hints towards photochemistry photochemistry is the subject or in chemistry which sort of deals with happens when light interacts with certain uh, chemical elements and for the very first time ever we astronomers have actually detected photochemistry outside our solar system in the form of sulfur dioxide which is really exciting so james webb due to its high sensitive we are being able to get all of this new data which is which was completely unknown to us although i must tell you that all of these have been already theorized by physicists and astronomers who study exoplanets so uh, they kind of predicted what you would actually see but but in the real world having to get all of this data and seeing all of this in the in real life is pretty exciting in my opinion and james webb is sort of opening the door to uh, this new era in studying exoplanets even if you see this particular planet it has um, it has traces of water vapor inside its atmosphere and it has carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and all of this is really particularly interesting to me is because that sort of uh, tells you life might exist elsewhere than earth if not in such an advanced form maybe it's in microorganisms and microbes so i actually had this wonderful opportunity in my university here in queens in meeting one of the leads of building this instrument for james webb uh, he is one of the experts in studying exoplanets and he is uh, professor rene doyan and i personally asked him this question is what kind of life form are you exactly expecting uh, when you sort of look at these uh, particular exoplanets and the answer he gave me was well we are we aren't really expecting um, advanced life forms uh, but what we're trying to see is biosignatures very simple biosignatures which would hint to even the most simplest life forms like 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 microbes or bacteria which in my opinion makes a lot of sense hope you guys got a little bit of idea as to what transiting is and transiting spectroscopy uh, particularly is and with that that we can study so many new exoplanets outside our solar system using the james webb telescope overall astronomy is really heading into this exciting era such new powerful instruments up in space and, bo and both on the ground and again if you guys have any requests on one on any particular topic that you want would like me to talk about please uh, feel free to comment down below and i shall definitely address those so if you really liked what you see please consider subscribing again this gives me a little bit of more motivation to make better content for you guys so with all of that being said i will catch you guys in the next one really soon <music>